Dear students, welcome to EPG Patashala. I am Professor Korada Subramanyam from University of Hyderabad. Uh, now in the paper that is Vedic, Epic and Puranic Culture of India, now we are going to discuss a one uh, module on uh, Vedangas Vyakaranam. That is the main subject is Vyakaranam. So, Vyakaranam what, uh, is uh, uh, generally translated as grammar and it is one of the six uh, Vedangas and considered as the mouth of uh, Veda Purusha, uh, Veda personified. It is also called uh, Shabdana Shastram. Unlike the grammar of any other language, Vyakaranam of Sanskrit language is associated with philosophy. Literally, the term Vyakaranam means an instrument that separates Shabdas or perfect Shabdas from Avashabdas or imperfect Shabdas. Dharma can be achieved by employing uh, perfect Shabdas and the imperfect Shabdas cause, uh, cause Adharma. Just like any other Vedanga, Vyakaranam also would help one attain moksha or liberation from the cycle of birth and death. The term Shabda is untranslatable as it denotes the following Varnaha, Prakrutihi, Pratyaha, Padam, Vakyam, Avantra Vakyam, Mahavakyam, uh, Dhani, uh, etc. So Vyakaranam is not grammar, parts of speech, etc. But more than that, it is a rough translation. Vyakaranam is considered to be the most important among Vedangas as it is the base of all disciplines. For that matter, grammar is the backbone of any language and literature. Now, origin of Vyakaranam. Actually, where is this origin of Vyakaranam in Veda? This we exhibit because we claim that Vyakaranam is a Vedanga. The origin of Vyakaranam is there in Vedas. In Gopatha Brahmana, as we come across the uh, terminology that is employed in Vyakarana. Omkaram prachamaha kodhatuhu kim pratipadikam kim akhyatam kim lingam kim vachanam ka vibhaktihi kaf pratyayaha kaswaraha etc etc. So let us uh, take up the word Om and uh, what is the verbal root uh, and nominal root what is meant by verb, gender, number, case, suffix and accent, this is a discussion is found there. So, the Shabdas in Sanskrit, uh, Sanskrit language can be put under two headings, Laukika, that is secular and Vaitika. So far as uh, the meaning is concerned, there is no difference between Laukika and Vaitika Shabdas. Rather, the form of some Shabdas is different in uh, Vedas. For example, in Loka, it is Karnaihi. With the years, meaning is the same. Kannevi bhadrangane vishra noyama devaha, like that, the mantra we find in Krishna Ayurveda. So, devaha in Lokaka Bhasha, it means gods. Whereas in Veda, we come across devasaha, like that. So, prajaha, people, prajasaha in Veda. So, there is slightly difference in the form of a shabda. Moreover, the swara or accent is mandatory in Veda and any change in swara would cause a uh, change in meaning. On the other hand, although swara is common to both kinds of shabdas, people do not employ the same in loka, that is in secular uh, Sanskrit. Another significant point is that there is free word order in loka, whereas in Vedic literature, the order of words is prescribed. So, Pratishakya and Vyakaranam. Before Panani entered the scene, there used to be two separate uh, Vyakaranams. The one exclusively useful uh, to analyze uh, Vaidika Shabdas uh, called Pratishakyas and Vyakaranams we meant for the final the analysis of uh, Laukika Shabdas such as Rikpratishakya etc. Uh, for Vedas and Aindra Vyakaranam uh, for Loka. It was Panini considered to be the most genius person on earth who put the content of both Pratishakya and Vyakaranam in a nutshell called Ashtadhyayi, the treatise that uh, containing eight chapters. Thus, Panini's Vyakaranam became a Vedanga. Because it deals with Vaidhika Shabdas also, only Panini's Vyakaranam is fit to be called a Vedanga, not others. Trimuni Vyakaranam. Ashtadhyayi consists of 4000 sotras 
sutras are elliptical sentences uh, with economy of uh, letters and the sutras are supported by vartikas that is sentences of amendment by katyayana et al patanjali a great sage authored mahabhashyam the great sholiyam uh, a vast and profound commentary on ashtadhyayi so comment general commentary is different uh, the sholiyam or bhashyam is different uh, bhashyam has got some specific properties uh, to deal with then uh, since paniyan uh, paniyam or panis grammar is based uh, on the trio of sutra vartika and bhashya of panini kaatyayana and patanjali respectively it is called trimuru vyakaranam grammar of the three sages three defects of body and uh, speech and mind there are three kinds of defects related to body speech and mind and it is believed that patanjali in order to obviate the defects authored charaka sutram ay that is in ayurveda mahabhashyam and yoga anushasanam uh, three works Uh, the study of uh, mahabharshyam is considered on a par with ruling uh, of a great empire then benefits of vyakaranam the benefits of vyakaranam are enumerated in mahabharshyam uh, that is in the first chapter that is called paspashandhikam there are three major benefits of the study of uh, vyakaranam vedanam raksha see Uh, Veda Nam Raksha means protection of Vedas. The Vedic literature, uh, which is a mass of knowledge and non-human, that is, Apurusheya, Vedas are not authored by human beings. Uh, they, they have emanated from the uh, faces of uh, Brahman. So, the has to be the, the literature has to be protected in terms of the form of Shabda, accent, Sandhi, that is, morphophonics, etc. so a non vyakarana or non grammarian who does not did not study vyakaranam cannot do this job therefore in order to protect the rich and invaluable vedic literature inherited from sages one should study vyakaranam the second uh, purpose is uh, laghu upayaha laghu upayaha an easy device thousands of shabdas cannot be committed to heart that means getting by heart so many words or shabdas is very difficult so vyakaranam is an easy device uh, device to know the gamut of shabdas this third uh, benefit is that moksha arresting the cycle of birth and death vyakaranam is considered not only as a vedanga but also as a darshana on a par with uh, vedanta etc that is useful in attaining moksha that is the ultimate goal of a human being being the dharmartha kama moksha four things are there therefore vyakaranam is considered as a highway to reach brahman and that is moksha then how to compile vyakaranam there was the question this is question was uh, uh discussed by patanjali in paspashanhikam a uh, first chapter of mahabhashyam one would get dharma that leads to moksha by employing shabdas that is the perfect shabdas which are acceptable to vyakarana with the knowledge of vyakaranam so although there is one hitch in terms of uh, transformation of meaning by employing apashabdas that is imperfect shabdas or those not acceptable to vyakaranam it is uh, dharma one has to forego gohu is the shabda let us take an example and discuss gohu is the shabda gavi goni gota gopotalika etc are apashabdas employed to express the same sense that means there is no change of meaning in the same meaning some people employ the word gohu whereas others you employ words like gavi goni gota gopotalika etc it may change from person to person village to village and town to town so badha is the shabda some people say badha some people say bada others say bada these are apashabdas bhedaha is the shabda bhedaha 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 or apashabdas there can be i mean the, the, the list is uh, without any end and the apashabdas are not limited in number they may also vary from house to house village to village etc if one wants to compile a vyakaranam then he can list either shabdas or apashabdas there too since the number of shabdas is less and limited it is wise to offer a list of the same and the implication is that the rest are apashabdas 
uh, further cataloging all the shabdas of a language like sanskrit which is rich in vocabulary is an impossible task therefore panini followed the general exception rule system a general rule is made and wherever there are exceptions another rule is made for them this so, so now prayoga sharanam vyakaranam vyakaranam is based on usage panini is not creator srashta of shabdas rather he is registrar smarta one who collects the uh, information and records therefore panini with his yogic Uh, capacity uh, um, uh, that is uh, yoga shakti uh, could discern the gamut of shabdas across uh, 1137 branches of veda and a vast literature of uh, loka that is upavedas vedangas darshanas puranas kavyas etc and such an exceptional sage compiled an exceptional work called ashtadhyayi so if there is usage that is prayoga either in veda or in loka then only one can analyze such a shabda through vyakaranam that is what is meant by prayoga sharanam vyakaranam usage is the result of vyakaranam then there is dharma niyama vyakaranam prescribes dharma see in uh, what happens is in the uh, uh, universe there are many languages generally the very purpose of a language is transformation of meaning from the speaker to the listener whereas you, for in, in the case of sanskritam that purpose is already served that is transformation of meaning from speaker to the listener is already served but also uh, in addition dharma is uh, also there that is it can be attained by employing uh, shabdas that are acceptable to vyakaranam so when people can have vaidika shabdas from veda and logika shabdas from loka why vyakaranam this question was raised by some people as recorded by patanjali in paspashandikam mahabhashyam so language changes by nature and it is not feasible to compile a vyakaranam for any language therefore if and only if the shabda the artha and the sambandha between them is immutable then only it is feasible to compile a vyakaranam following the above norm the trio of uh, panini kaatchayana and patanjali compiled the vyakaranam which has got two hallmarks namely brevity that is laghavam and perfection nirdushtada and the same made paniniyam popular across the globe this is how and why sanskrit has become the only only language that is suitable to computers so vyakaranam following the usage uh, prescribes the shabdas and usage of uh, such shabdas with the knowledge of vyakaranam would fetch dharma in other words unlike other languages usage of a sanskrit shabda in the said fashion would get two things transformation of meaning and dharma needless to say dharma would lead to moksha so now varna samamnaya According to the uninterrupted tradition, Panini performed tapas, uh, prayed to God while leading an ascetic life of uh, Shiva. The latter appeared and while dancing, uh, sounded his uh, dhaka, a small hand-held double-sided drum, to 14 uh, for 14 times. The sounds were taken by Panini as the following set of sutras. and the consist uh, the uh, consists of which uh, sutras consist of which consist of uh, the alphabet they are called maheshwara sutras aphorisms offered by shiva and are the base of uh, uh, the ashtadhyayi ai un rulak e on ai auch haya varat lan nyamanganam jabhay ghadhadash jabagadadash khapha chatha tha chatatau kapai shashasar hal इति महेश्वरा सूत्राणी वन कैन मेक ए नंबर ऑफ प्रत्याहारास् आर् एब्रिविएशन अउट ऑफ दि सूत्रास् अंड इट ईज अचीव इकानमी बै नाट अट्रिंग ईच लेटर दि लास्ट लेटर्स आर् मेट टू मेक प्रत्याहारा अंड देर फोर आर् नाट टू बी कौंटेड सच ए लेटर ईज का टेक्निकली इत दि uh akkise pratyahara which denotes the letters a e u ru 
Ach is it means a vowel also. It denotes a e u r l u a o i o. And hal it means uh, it denotes it means a consonant. Hal means a consonant. It denotes hayavara la nyamangana na jabagatha tha jabagada kapha chatha ka chata ta ka pa sha sha sa. And sa. So the letter ha is uttered twice, keeping a specific grammatical application in mind. The pratyahara uh, al means any letter because you are taking uh, a from a un and then you are combining you with it with the uh, la that is in the last sotram hal. So it means al means any letter. That means it can be ach a vowel or hal a consonant. So. Uh, since a, e, u, na, etc., or ayun, a, etc., are useful in creating uh, designations such as ak, ach, hal, etc., they are called samgya sotras, aphorisms for uh, designation. Then, uh, jati and uh, vyakti. This concept is very much useful and also universal. Most of the, uh, the theories that are there in uh, Paniniyam are uh, universal. That means they are useful for any language, not only for Sanskritam. So, this jati vyakti, which is there in every uh, system of Indian philosophy is uh, very important for uh, compiling Vyakaranam. How? Do not kill a cow. Take a sentence like do not kill a cow. It means do not kill any cow. Here the word cow in the sentence uh, means the total number of cows on earth. That is the class of cows or jati. This is what is called jati. Fetch a cow means uh, fetch a single cow. The word cow in this sentence means a cow individual that is a single cow or vyakti. The jati of a cow is expressed by uh, a suffix uh, ka, namely uh, tva artha. Gautam or Gauta, Kaunas, yeah, and it is abstract. The Jati has got the Vyakti as its resort. That is, if one wants to know Jati, it is available in a Vyakti only. Similarly, one cannot find a Vyakti devoid of Jati. In other words, Jati and Vyakti are Nantariyaka or inseparable. This concept is universal, that is, applicable to all languages. Gautva Jati is available only in a cow and a cow devoid of gautva jati is uh, um, an individual not an individual that means without jati there cannot be there uh, uh, there cannot be an individual uh, uh, a cow devoid of gautva jati is not available so panini employed the technique of jati and vyakti in his ashtadhyay in the maheshwara sotras a e u n a e u n a means the jati of a which means the 18 types of A. That is Harsva, uh, Dirgha, Prata, the Udatta, Anudatta, Sarita, and in uh, Anunasika and Anandasika. Thus, a total of 18 Akaras, uh, the letter A, are taken care of. Thus, the 18 Akaras are taken care of by a single A due to Jati. That means he need not pronounce all the uh, rest of the 17 Akaras. But simply says A, and if you take the Jati, all the 18 Akaras are uh, considered to have been uh, taken or expressed or denoted. Such is the economy of Panini. If Panini wants to denote a short A, then he would say At. For the long letter, it is At, that is, he adds Ta to the specific letter, so that Jati is not applied. This process is called Taparakaranam or adding Ta to the letter. Chitushtayi Shabdanam Prabhurtihi. How many kinds of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Shabdas are there following their behavior? The, it is fourfold behavior of Shabdas. The gamut of Shabdas is put under four headings following their behavior. The first one is Jati. The word Gauh denotes Gautva Jati. Due to Nantari Yakatva, the Vyakti is also denoted simultaneously. That means if you say Gauhu, both Gautva Jati as well as Gau Vyakti, I mean the class of uh, uh, cow as well as the individual cow, both are uh, expressed. Gunaha, attribute or property or qualifier, whatever it may be. Shukla Gauhu, a white cow. Here, uh, Shakti is, uh, uh, Shukla is a guna. Shukla means white. So, 
the third one yeah, that is uh, 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 among the shabdas uh, it is kriya kriya means activity pachat for example pachati pachati means cooking it is a word that denotes a kriya or uh, action action or activity whatever it may be so the fourth kind of uh, uh, shabda shabdas gamut of shabdas the fourth kind is uh, called samgnya name or designation rama for example is the name of a person so all the above four that is jati guna kriya and samgnya are available in the uh, associated with a vyakti only that means vyakti will be there suppose you take a cow or something like that then you will find the jati guna and kriya uh, and samgnya within so that is it. so shabda anushasanam a treatise that prescribes shabdas so panini vyakaranam one can take as a shabdan shasanam that uh, describes and prescribes shabdas both things are both the jobs are done by a single vyakaranam uh, is often referred to by the term sh- shabdan shasanam uh, which literally means a treatise that prescribes shabdas by vividly offering their structure that is rule suffix etc as has already been stated the term shabda denotes a number of things such as varna prakruti pratyaya padam vakyam avantar vakyam mahavakyam etc and hence could not or should not be translated so panini's vyakaran deals with all the said elements vakyam is the unit of language vakyam means sentence it is a unit of language where are you coming from this is a question answer is hostel here the answer that is uh, uh, hostel is an elliptical sentence elliptical sentence means incomplete sentence so uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, i am i am coming and uh, from or ellipses i am coming from or ellipses that means to be added therefore even if it is a single word be it noun or verb if it conveys a complete sense then it is Uh, uh, called an elliptical sentence so how to compile vyakaranam cataloging all the sentences employed in, is simply impossible that means the sentences that were spoken being spoken going to be spoken one cannot take all the gamut of things uh, in these three stages so even the words are innumerable to list padas padas see sentences vakyas are infinite in number and so also the padas words therefore the founders of vyakaranam have, have come down to the combination of prakriti and pratyaya or root and suffix by adding a number of pratyayas to a single root one can easily produce many shabdas or words so for example if you take kru is the uh, root that is root uh, of a verb verbal root so then if you act uh, if you add tavya it will become kartavyam ti kriti uh, nya uh, karyam uh, kyap uh, kritcham uh, sha kriya aniyar karaniyam krutrich karta nul karaka uh, uh, an ka, uh, karaha so kta krata ktavatu kratavan krul yut karanam krip krit and nich plus yut karanam like that you by on a sing adding different prachayas different suffixes on a single verbal root one would get so many shabdas while analyzing the shabdas panini first makes a general rule such as karmanyan this is an example if a verbal root is prescribed if preceded by a word in accusative case then there will be the suffix an that is the meaning kumbham karoti iti kumbhakaraha is the example kumbham a part that is a, in accusative uh, case ditiya vibhakti and karoti is the verb therefore kru plus a kumbhakaraha it becomes in case where an is not applicable he makes an exceptional rule ataha anubhasarge kaha ato anubhasarge kaha if the verbal root is ending in a and not prefixed with an upasarga that is pra para etc then there will be the suffix ka in the same context so gam dadati one who donates a cow is called godaha upasargaha no prefixes panini provided 
uh, with 22 of our gas which can be prefixed to uh, nouns and verbs as they cause change of meaning prapara apasam anu avanis nirudh sudur vi angni adhi api pratipari up su ut abhi pratipari upa these are the upasagas offered by panini so panini's other works in order to achieve integrity uh, panini provided with a couple of works in support of first adhyayi one is lingana shasana uh, so, uh, so, sotra pathaha so this is a group of sotras which help in deciding the gender of uh, a shabda a uh, shabda by the suffix uh, etc so dhatu patha this is a list of uh, about 2000 verbal roots beautiful verbal roots ma meaning is not provided by panini but uh, nagesh bhatta says that uh, there uh, the bhemasena etc some scholars had uh, just added the meaning to the uh, pure dhatu patha of panini so ganapatha it is just like a dictionary of words with the same suffix the words ending with the same suffix are grouped as uh, one so, uh, and called a Gana, Shiksha, Panini authored a Shiksha, one of the Vedangas dealing with pronunciation, etc. With Ashtadhyayi, Panini authored five works for Vyakaranam, uh, apart from the above, Panini took uh, one of the so sotras of uh, Shantanu uh, Maharshi, they are useful, that are useful in uh, producing Shabdas. So, concepts in Ashtadhyayi. In uh, uh, Panini, uh, put the gamut of Shabdas under two headings. One is Subantas and the other is Tingantas. Uh, here is uh, his style of analysis. Krutpracheha, the suffix added to a verbal root. Supracheha, the suffix added to a Pratipadikam. Stripracheha, the suffix added to a Pratipadikam before sup to denote femininity in the Stripracha is the is a Sri Prachaya. Uh, Tadhita Prachaya, the suffix added to an a Subanta is called Tadhita. Uh, uh, then Thing Prachaya, the suffix added on a verbal root in order to produce a Thingantam is called Thing. Uh, bhu, Dhatu and Bhavati is the Thingantam. So Sandhi morphophonemics, this is called uh, phonology. In pronunciation, uh, when two letters are pronounced in quick succession, it is called Sandhi and the result is uh, phonemic change. Uh, so, Ganga Udakam Gangotakam. Seventh one is Samasa. It's a compound. Two or more words having uh, separate meanings unite to form into a single word called Samasa and the same conveys a united uh, single meaning. Rajnaha Purushaha, Raja Purushaha, etc. So, eighth one is called Karakam, dealing with uh, syntax. Uh, karakam means kriya janakatvam karakatvam. If a noun is going to generate a kriya, then it is called a uh, karakam. So, there are six karakas and shashti uh, possessive case. Sambandha is not a karaka. Uh, Ramaha uh, vanam gachati. In, in the above sentence, Ramaha is karta and gachati is uh, vanam is karma. Uh, shashti is not uh, considered as a karakam because it depends, it denotes the relation between two things. Rajna of Purushaha, uh, the king's servant, Panini analyzed the discourse Mahavakyam uh, uh, also. Uh, Aryavarta, any Shabda not uh, touched by Panini but is used by Aryas can be taken as authoritative. Says Panini, uh, Aryas were the uh, people residing in Aryavarta, the place surrounded by Himalayas. Uh, Vinshas, Prayaga and Kurukshetra. So like that, the, <coughs> this is, uh, there is some Aryan invasion theory uh, that has been making uh, rounds uh, for the last 150 years, but there are no Aryans as such. The word Aryan is not Sanskrit nor any other language uh, and the Arya, Aryas in Aryavarta uh, follow a, an ascetic life that is very difficult to follow and they are careful even about the form of Shabdas, their pronunciation etc. And if Panini did not touch any Shabdas but are seen in usages, then if they are used by Aryas that is the resident of especially Brahmanas of Aryavarta, then that can be taken as uh, an authority and that is acceptable to uh, Panini also. This is actually what is meant. So, Aryas uh, did not come from anywhere uh, in the world, but 
they are the natural and uh, original residents of uh, Aryavarta surrounded by the uh, four boundaries that are mentioned, uh, Himalayas, Vindhya, etc., etc. Therefore, one has to take into uh, this uh, Paninsotram, uh, Prushodaradini Yathopatishtam in 6th Jaya Tharudupada 109 Sotra and under that Patanjali clearly explains uh, who are Aryas, what are their uh, actual, uh, I mean, uh, what is their lifestyle and uh, why should they be taken as authoritative in terms of the perfection of Shabdas, uh, etc., etc. All this is discussed by Patanjali and also in Memansa uh, in first Jaya and uh, here Ari, Aryam Lechadhikarnam it is called and in uh, Arya Vartaf Punyavum Himajjam Vinjahim Agayavu uh, says Amarakosha and in Dharmashastras also we have this Arya Varta concept and uh, it is simply uh, 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 the western uh, people who wanted to generate a kind of inferiority complex in the minds of uh, uh, Indians uh, and uh, they started this uh, uh, Aryan invasion theory, Aryas uh, follow yoga, uh, Padhati yoga, path of yoga and they follow Satyam, Ahimsa etc etc. They do not attack anybody, they do not cause hurt, I mean they do not cause any kind of pain uh, to anybody and they have been following the path of uh, Dharma that we would finally reach, uh, at, get uh, Moksha. So, this concept is not there in the Western uh, culture, whatsoever it may be. So, we should uh, resist the uh, kind of uh, theories or hypotheses that Arya, Arya, Aryans are there, and, uh, they have come from uh, outside India, etc., etc. So, for more details, please visit the uh, website on EPG Patashala and uh, thank you very much.